Welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast, the podcast designed to challenge you to break the mold that average has on the world. Each episode offers insights directly from those who choose to break average every day. Now for the latest insights, here are your hosts, Paul Gustafson and Barry Smith. Welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast. I'm with Barry Smith and Barry, we're closing out the year, man. How are you doing? How's how's 2022 been for you? It's almost over. Um, I'll tell you, it's been an interesting year. It's been a year of transition. I gotta, I gotta kind of point to something that many of our mentors have, you know, taught us that transformation really begins with awareness. Mm. And and 2022 has really been a an awareness journey for me. Right, really figuring out where I'm at, identifying where I want to go, how to get there. Um, learned a lot about myself this year productivity wise you know where i'm efficient where i'm not what gets in my way um so that was exciting it was uh it, i'll tell you it's tough when you put yourself to the test and you got to you know meet your own goals and so forth you start learning real quick where you're falling short on being productive and yeah. so that's that's kind of ties into some content i've been working on that i'll be getting out to the public soon um, that I'm excited about, but it's, it's been a real journey, been a journey of discovery, learning, um, you know, it's just been a, it's been an interesting year, trans transformational year. And I'm really looking forward to 2023. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. I, I always love end of the years and it's not to say that the year in the rear is bad. It means, Hey, look, we've got a fresh start coming up. It's like each day, each day is, is got its own opportunities for us. And we can look at it. Remember when we were in Guatemala, I forget who it was. He would tell us every morning when we would walk over to the training facility of those first few days, happy new day. Happy new day. That's right. I don't remember who that was either. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be distracted this entire podcast trying to figure that out. It'll <laughs> I come. do remember a happy new day though. And it was, it was in itself was something like, Whoa, that's a significant statement. Oh. Cause you don't hear that from anybody. And I, I'm like, occasionally I'll use it, but not often. Maybe I'll use it more often in 2023 because yeah. right. You know, happy new day. It's a new day. You know, and I'm a person of faith and you know, um, having that kind of statement and mindset to start the day to think about, Hey, wow. Rejoice in the day, what God has given us. Right. Yep. Um, there's so much to be thankful for. And if we can start off with that praise, if you will, that acknowledgement, that awareness, that was your word for 2022 in the rear. So we started the year with the word, my word to start was imagine. And you know where I went with that, yeah. but I love what you said was, Hey, look, my year, I'm for me, it was about awareness. Yeah. So, um, what did you start the year with? Well, I started, I, it's funny. I started my word of the year was proximity okay. and, and certainly that brought you and I together. You know, that was part of the goal. And I don't think, you know, it was, it was an intention I set, but I think when you reached out and said, Hey, let's, let's get going on this together again. Um, you know, that was, that wasn't even my awareness when I chose that word proximity for 2022, some other things, um, some other people I want to connect to. I had a couple, a uh, couple trips across the pond this year, working on a coaching accreditation I've been, you know, plugged back in with, with our friend Christian Simpson and a great group of people there. Um, and I think also, you know, in hindsight, as I've started to reflect now, proximity initially was intention on, on who I wanted to be around, you know, who I wanted to connect with. But what I found also interesting is it's also been who I've, you know, kind of stepped away from, you mm -hmm. know, maybe, maybe some, some people I had proximity to that I didn't want and uh, won't, don't need to go way into that. But it's, it's, it's interesting when you really start thinking about, again, you know, you know, a word I got to bring in every conversation environment, uh -huh. the people that are close to you, the people you're spending time with. Um, good or bad are going to, you know, impact your outcome. And yeah. so, so it's been a great year of kind of realigning that feel really good about where I'm at now. And, and as you and I have mentioned in the past year, now looking forward to 2023 being the year of simplicity, I think 
I think for me, it's really that it's, it's getting rid of anything that doesn't serve my purpose, anything that doesn't move me forward um, and be able to put all my time and energy into the things that I want to accomplish. And so I'm excited, man. We'll see. We'll see. I got, I got kind of a big rock. I got to get out of the way first and that's, that will eliminate one big distraction, but then it's just heads down, man. I'm, I'm really excited about what I'm going to get out of this, this year coming up. It's going to be a, a phenomenal year. Um, there's so much growth. Let's talk about why we know it could be a phenomenal year. Think about it, Barry. 10 years ago, 10 years ago, end of 2012, yeah. compare, compare yourself. How far has Barry Smith gone in 10 years? Where were you? Where are you? Well, I can tell you this. At the end of 2012, I had just got my first financial return as a coach speaker and trainer hmm. first first dollar i ever made was in october of 2012 so that really you know that started me on the path that i've been on you know certainly doing it at a, at a much more successful level now uh, but that was you know basically it's a complete life change do over remake restart whatever you want to call it um but i'm 180 degrees out from where I was, you know, 10 years ago, still working in construction industry, trying to find my way, go a different direction, kind of create a new identity. Um, you know, it was all a huge learning curve for me, you know, prior yeah. to that public speaking for me was screaming across a job site. So, you know, it was just, it was different, different. Um, but, but very blessed, you know, it's just been awesome. What's taken place the last 10 years has definitely put me in a, in a new spot at every level of my life and, and love where I'm at right now. Well, and it kind of sets the table for what we're going to talk about today, right? So as you kind of evaluate the experience of where you've been, is it encouraging to know like, okay, I mean, yeah, we all have challenges. Even this past year, we've had challenges, but there's still something that encourages us as we continue to step forward in our progress, as we continue to take those steps forward, right? So encouragement, um, is it, first of all, are you encouraged as you look back like, yeah, wow. I think without encouragement, I never would have made it, you know, yeah. and you were one of those guys, right? Cause it's look, every, every road outside your comfort zone is bumpy. There's no way, no way around it. It's going to have some failures in it. It's going to have some tough times. And, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to have somebody kind of there in your corner that's willing to go, Hey man, you're going to get through this. You got this. And, and I, man, you know, we, we don't have enough time to go through, all the stories I could tell you about different times along the way where I was in a tough spot, you know, can I really do this? Who am I to think I can, you know, make this total career change, yep. uh, the financial side of things, you know, all the, all the changes and, and every time without fail. And again, it kind of goes into the, the environment I was putting myself in, but every time without fail, when I was, you know, really struggling somebody yourself, or, you know, I could name a whole bunch of other people right now, would jump in at, you know, what seemed like the perfect timing and just go, Hey man, you know, you, you're doing okay. You got this, you'll get yeah. through. What can I do to help you? Um, and I think that, you know, that the key to me and encouragement is, you know, again, pull from some of the stuff we studied earlier in the year, the gap in the gain, um, you know, Dan Sullivan's book, I think yep. one great way to get out of the gap is to have somebody come alongside you, encourage you and remind you of, the things you have succeeded in, you know, get you back in that gain mode. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just, again, putting all those things together this year after reading that book. Um, yeah. Encourage, I, encouragement's huge. Everybody it needs it, and everybody can give it. Yeah. can give it. And, and what's great is to your point is we can actually give encouragement to ourselves. Yeah. And I love the word encourage because it means to pour courage into and, you know, who could, who doesn't want more courage in their life? Yeah. So if you can pour courage into yourself, into other people, boy, that's going to be a, a game changer. Um, I've seen, you know, we watched you and I were talking about football before we hit the record button. And what we didn't get into is some of what happens, the mindset of, of an athlete between, between Sundays, between yeah. plays. And if there's not encouragement that takes place between the plays or between Sundays when they play, 
then they're not going to be their optimal best. They can't be, right? So they need, we need, all of us need encouragement. We need courage to be poured into us and we can step in. It doesn't mean the absence of fear. It doesn't mean there's not doubt. Yes, there's going to be doubt. But when you get encouragement, you can step forward despite the doubt. And it's sometimes just knowing what that next step is, not all the steps. And um, to your point, Gap in the Game, great book that we studied earlier this year. That was a revelation for a lot of folks that, you know what, rather than living in the gaps that we see in front of us, and we know we're moving forward, but if that's all we see, we don't realize how far we've actually come, yeah. then we're going to get fearful. We're going to get scared of the process, what I call the, the process. It's one of my biggest fears is like, holy cow, that's a lot of work. I'm in a room that needs reconstruction. And if I look at it from a holistic standpoint of everything that needs to be done to get this room done, man, I don't want to do any of it. <laughs> Right. But if I look at it like, you know, no, wait a minute. No, I already put the floor down. But what if I just do one more thing? Yep. Well, recognize what I've done and recognize what I just need to do the one thing. And I step forward with that. Don't worry about all the other things that, that are throwing you off, you know? So I remember, you know, struggling through college. We've got all sorts of experiences. You and I both yep. like, this is a long road. Yeah, it's a long road. It's a long road. But you know what? You're, you've already gone a, a significant distance. And the road in front of you that looks long is nothing like what you've already accomplished. Go. Yeah. Keep stepping forward. So, you, have to. you have to. And I, I just want to encourage folks, too, right now. You got a fresh start. Happy New Day. Let's go. This is it. You, you got a great opportunity. You don't have to get it all done in one, at one shot. And um, I deal with something called procrastination. <laughs> oh, you're the you're the only one. You know that, right? It's just you, Paul. And I I realize we all have struggles in different ways. And for me, yeah, Barry, um, I'm not the only one, man. And my my problem is I I want it perfect. I want to get it right. You know, I just we just had this book released. Um, that book was. I told you how many version numbers I had before I finally released it. Want to share it? 79? 79. <laughs> <laughs> so Barry was cracking up at me earlier. I said, yeah, that's version 79. Right? How many guys have sev version, the 79th version of a document before they finally release it? If that's not a sign of procrastination, I don't know what it is. So procrastination is the ultimate form of perfectionism, but we got her out there. It feels good. Well, you know, sometimes you just, you just gotta, you gotta get it right. And I know I, and I, I still have I typos you, in there. I'm sure. No, I know. But I think the 79 came from your passion about wanting to deliver the message you intended to deliver. Cause I yep. know how, you know, I, I shared with you, I just finished your book. Um, just finished it yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, you, it's just you, you know, I can tell how much work you put into it, how much you wanted the stories to have impact. So the 79 versions, right. Honestly, it doesn't surprise me because I know how you are. I've spent a decade with you now. And yeah. it's like, if there's one little thing in there, I won't call it OCD. I won't, I won't quite throw you in, into that into that box. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not real big on boxes because I think we all have little idiosyncrasies we deal sure. with. Yeah. But I think it's, it's at the end of the day, it's your passion for getting something that's, that's worthy of you want it to be worthy of and, and serve, you know, your audience. And this is just an outstanding book. I told you, I think it's your best work. I think there's an incredible message in there. I think you bring it alive with your stories. You did a lot of research, you know, clearly and, and getting the stories right. And you talk about encouragement. You know, there's encouragement throughout that book. Mm. And that's oh, what it's you. all about. Yeah. I mean, for all of us, it's an opportunity. What what kind of encouragement can we pour into somebody else? I, I talk about speak life into that book, and we'll talk a little bit more of some of the elements and maybe not so much of that specific concept to speak life. 
But we are talking about power of encouragement today, so maybe it does kind of parlay nicely. But we have an opportunity, Barry, you, me, everybody that's listening or watching this, we have an opportunity to speak life into other people. And think about, Barry, you're a dad, I'm a dad. Remember that when you spoke life into that, your son, right? And encourage them in different ways to do things that they never did. Maybe jumping off the still side do. of the pool. They're yeah. all in their thirties now. <laughs> it's, you still have that opportunity every day, right? We do every day. And what a great opportunity. Isn't that exciting? Didn't that make life like, wow. And, and now you've got grandkids like you, right? So it's the same thing. We get a ch- chance to do that. Um, One more thing as we, dive into this i want to just kind of bring a context right beach ball we're trying to get beach ball views here i met some re-met somebody for the first time in 30 years all right a friend of mine that my wife and i um and try to encourage when we were just a young married couple and he's a cambodian refugee wonderful wonderful man um I can't share his name on this, but it's just his story of his whole family trooping through Cambodia and gingerly walking through minefields and being finding freedom is an amazing story. And he and I were talking about it today. Again, though, I hadn't seen him in 30 years, 29 years. And so I realized something in our conversation because he was so excited to see me. He says, Paul, I've been looking for you we lost track and I lost your contact and I knew you were still around and I've been thinking about you and I I wanted to connect with you and Barbara. And so, uh, it was wonderful to connect. And I realized two things. One, we could pick up right where we were left off, which is really cool, which is encouraging in itself. But I also realized that he's changed and I've changed and maybe for the better that we're not the same. And I I realized that there was almost an expectation that I think he had initially. And, and, And this is not a knock at all. It's just, I think it's human nature because you remember somebody from the last time you saw them. And yes, maybe we can pick it up where we were, but that person isn't the same as, as what you were. He's changed. I've changed. We've had growth. And so while we can reminisce of the old days, the beautiful part of our conversations were the growth paths that we've taken, the things that we've walked yeah. through. And I uh, can't wait for more discussions on that because we've got a whole 30 years of life to catch up on. And um, that was just a, that was like really cool encouragement today. You know, I think that, I think that represents the journey we go on, you know, yeah. unfortunately for, for guys like you and I, we're able to to actually feel like we've improved over those 30 years. You know, I think we all know not everybody can say that, but, you know, I think it becomes, Paul, I think it becomes part of the legacy. You know, what we do is as far as encouraging people. Um, One of the things I'm, I'm really thinking into as we go into 2023 is to be a better communicator and that encouraging people, you know, it's just, it's not been a strength of mine. You know, my whole life, I've been around people who are really good at, you know, writing thank you cards and making phone calls and, just doing those random acts of communication just to say, Hey, how are you doing? And I've never been really, you know, it's never been a, a skill set of mine. I'm, yeah. I'm not good at it. And I recognize that. So that's one of the things I'm setting an intention for, for 2023, as I simplify, but I do definitely want to, you know, do a better job communicating with family, with clients, with, you know, whoever's in my, and I guess at the same time, people that I don't know yet, you know, yeah. more, more of those random acts of kindness. You talk about encouraging. You can see a lot. You know, you and I have been through all kinds of speaker training, right? You know, all yep. about body movements, facial expressions. You know, we're, we're, I don't know if we're, I'd consider us complete, you know, subject matter experts, but I think we know a couple of things about, about, you know, those facial expressions and we can see, you know, you can see, you can see if somebody's having a tough day, a tough time, mm-hmm. um, you know, certainly when people's, you know, got a tear coming out of their eye or, or kind of, you know, welled up, you can tell, and man, that's opportunity. That's, I think that's God just going, hello, you know, you got it, you got an opportunity here to, you know, make an impact in somebody's life. And, 
I forget who said it first. I know I've heard a lot of people say it, but just the greatest gift you can give to anyone is, is giving them something with no expectation of anything in return. Mm. And I, and I want to be that guy, right? I, yeah. I, want every, I want everybody to be that person. Just do it. Cause it's the right thing to do. And honestly, those random acts of kindness, they fill my bucket, man. So, you know, how, how smart am I knowing that this is something that's going to make me feel good. I should be spending my whole day doing it. Right. <laughs> but Definitely yeah. need to do more. Definitely need to do more. And there's always some good stories that come out of that, you know, and you, then you get a note back. You don't know how much it meant to me. The timing was perfect. Thank you so much. You know, and it just, it just makes you feel good. And I think encouragement is, is one of those things that, you know, just doesn't kind of work on paper. It's just something you kind of got to get out and do. Yeah. And you've got to yeah. take that action to do it. Well, think about this too, right? We know the five love languages, Right. Words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, you know, the, you know, the physical touch yep. kind of stuff. And then, um, I'm missing one. <laughs> Somebody's going to be watching and listening like, Paul, you missed it. Screaming it out at us. Yeah. It's screaming uh -huh. it out at us, right? So uh, affirmation, quality time, um, acts of service. Gifts. Get, isn't Gifts. Gifts. Yeah. That's what, right. I, uh, right perfect. And we just got past Christmas. Actually, we're recording this, you and me, you know, just transparency guys. Christmas is coming for us in Real just quick. a couple of days. So gifts are the thing that everybody kind of centers on at Christmas. But what if it wasn't the gift that mattered? What if it was one of the other love languages? What if it was affirmations? What if we wrote a card instead of buying the gift card, we wrote a card and we just put something like, you know what? I love this quality about you. Thank you. Thank you for showing that quality in my life and the impact and the value that you bring to everybody else with this quality. That quality matters. Thank you for that. But see, I want to take it a step further and say, you don't have to wait for Christmas to do that. That's yeah. what I'm talking about going into 2023. That's what I want to do. You know, I've actually got a client who, who we, we, we've been talking about this, you know, he's working on leadership yeah. and, and wants to be a, a better leader for his team. And so, you know, like me, this hasn't been his strong space. And so we've talked about, okay, what can you do? You know, what, what's, what's John say? You got to, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. There's so much mm. power in that quote, right? Yeah. And so what if what if our focus was just just letting people know how much we care? I mean, does that not define encouragement? Oh yeah. If your mission was to let people know how much you care about them, the the encouragement would come as a byproduct. Yeah, and I'm writing down as you're sharing this. If you care for them, they'll care for you. Zig Ziglar. Right? That that's how it works. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's pretty powerful. I'm going to share this quote. Um, he was a legend. All right. He left before we, any of us expected, but, um, and he changed his life around. I'll be honest with you. I think he struggled as a young man, but as he got older, he got better. And you see, all, saw the encouragement that he had with his daughters, with other people around him, Kobe Bryant, yeah. right? Passed way too soon, February of 2020, I think yeah. when he passed, um, passed way too soon. Yeah. Way too soon. And he has this quote that I love. I share it in the book. Imagine, but I want to share it here. It's the most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. Yeah. And, um, that's pretty powerful for me. That's an encouragement to me just to be reminded of that and realizing, you know what? I, I get a chance to do that every single day, every day. And I miss it most of the time. But what if I was more aware of that? Like, wait a minute, there's people right there. What can you do? Who can you inspire today? So I'd start with that question. Who can you inspire today so that they can be great in whatever they want to do? And I think it's important for us on that last one, Barry, let's be honest. Sometimes we want to encourage and inspire people to be great at what we want them to do, 
<laughs> but that's not yep. the way it works, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. You know, and that's that that I think is where we can collectively put on our coaching hat, right? Um, be active yeah. listeners, you know, hear what's what's not only being said, but what's not being said and and be open to, you know, especially I think about my boys, right? You yeah. know, just always wanting to encourage them to go down the, you know, the path of of building their career, you know, and one nailed it, loves it. And the other one is, I think, still, you know, still kind of looking. But I I commend him for walking away from stuff that he wasn't passionate about, that he, mm. you know, that and I wish we would have had some more time to plan for next steps. <laughs> right. But I take no exception, man. If you're doing something that's just, you know, ruining your quality of life, then you got to find an alternative. You know, nobody, nobody should live. And we, we've all heard the stats on yeah. you know, how disengaged employees are, you know, and here in the States anyway. And, and that, you know, most people are just living paycheck to paycheck and yeah. just accept that as the way it is. You know, you want to, you want to find somebody who needs some encouragement, probably go, you know, knock on the door next to you. You don't have to go far. Yeah. You know, this is so powerful. Um, we see this, at least in the United States, and I've seen this when I was in Prague, and they do it differently in Prague than they do in the United States, but I've seen beggars, beggars on the corners in the streets holding out the signs in the United States saying, hey, you know, and they're they're panning for, not panning for gold, they're panning for support. Yeah. And the truth of it is, is they're panning, we know what they're really panning for, you and I. They're panning for encouragement is what they're panning for. It's not always the money or the food or the job or whatever it is the sign might say as they hold it. They just need to be encouraged. And the truth of it is, is like, you know what? They're not the only ones that need that. The, if we're in the car and we see those, maybe the person right next to you. So while you may not be able to serve that person, that person right there in the corner of that light holding that sign, you can certainly say a prayer for them. And then you can look around in your car and you realize, you know what? There's people right here that I get a chance to encourage because I may not be able to encourage that, that person right there in the corner the way that they need to be encouraged. And I can pray for them and I will, but I do know that I have within my proximity, or there's your word, within my proximity right here, a gift of an op opportunity to encourage somebody else. And you so, know, some, yeah. Something just came in. I love that. Something just came into my awareness that I know you'll appreciate. You spent a lot of time in your book, Imagine. You know, it's yeah. just out. I'll, I'll do your shameless plug this week. It's, 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 it's on okay. Amazon, right? It is. It's on. Okay, Imagine. Paul Gustafson, go get your copy. You won't be sorry. Uh, but you talk a lot in that book about hope, right? Yes, I do. And I think encouragement, you know, is, is kind of a path to hope. I it think, is. you know, that that's a tool. Encouragement is a tool that we can use, you know, maybe lift them up short term, you know, immediate. Oh, thank you for that. But then then you kind of plant some seeds of hope there, right? You know, mm. maybe change the attitude, a little check up from the neck up. Um you know, we just don't know the power that a simple, hey, you're doing a great job. Hey, you got this. Hey, thank you for helping out. Yeah. You know, I just don't think we realize the power of those simple words of encouragement sometimes, how much of a difference they can make. And I think also, Barry, I think you're spot on and make sure your motives are right in sharing those. Yeah. All right. Because there have oh, been yeah. times where maybe I've said it. And I wanted something in return. Yeah. Or check in a box. Yeah. Right. And that's not, no, no, don't go there. People see that's, through that. Right. Yeah. It, that doesn't help anybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> Where's the meaning and the, the encouragement if you're expecting it to get, to come right back. Right. Um, you will get it in a different way. You'll get it. And knowing at the end of the day, as you lay down and you realize, well, I had an opportunity to, to encourage, maybe speak life in a few people today. And, uh, thank you. 
thank you, God, for that opportunity that you gave me today to do that. And then you can sleep well. It says actually in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says it is good for man to be satisfied in their hard work and toil on this earth. And it says it in different versions, different variants, as you look at, at the different translations. But it's a powerful verse knowing that the work and effort that you put into the day and the opportunities that are there in front of you, it's good to look back on that and be satisfied in that. And it's not that you need any affirmations from anybody else. You actually get to affirm yourself because you evaluated it. You've seen it and you're like, you know what? Yep. Thank you, God. And boom. I Feels love good. That. Feels good. I love that. As as a builder, right? You know, somebody's been building stuff since, you know, they could hold a hammer and a saw. Um, yeah, I just I know so many times I get that done with something and I just, you know, step back and look at it and feel good about that. You know, again, yeah. living in the game, right? What we've got done. And yep. I think maybe that can. You know, there's another thing. Encouragement may be a, may be a trigger to move someone from the gap to the game real easy and real quick. Definitely. You know, that's, a, that's a game changer. It's a game changer. I think I shared on one of the earlier podcasts that, man, October was tough. You know, start out with COVID and it just kind of went downhill from there. And I, I lived that month in the gap and it wasn't until right towards the end and, and I was having a conversation and it hit me. Like, man, I've been living this whole month in the gap and I wonder why I've just been frustrated and down and tired and, and man, you just, you know, and, and I don't, honestly, I don't remember what changed it, but I got a pretty good idea that probably somebody gave me a little encouragement, some kind words, and it just kind of all of a sudden hit me. And so yeah. again, you don't know, everybody listen, man, you just don't know the power of what a few simple words of encouragement can do. Yeah. You know, what came to mind as you were sharing that was Guatemala. Yeah. Think about the state of Guatemala before we had a chance to be a part of that transformation, you know, transformation experience, transformation Guatemala experience. Um, and we could name probably a, a thousand different communities, you know, hundreds of different countries, lots of different cities where we've seen this, um, I almost want to say this, this cloud that is over the people and they're discouraged. They're, they're living in the gap. Yeah. So Guatemala, before Barry and I had a chance to go down there and be a part of that Maxwell team experience, um, what we discovered um, listening to Emmanuel and others is that he didn't use these words, but now that now it's come to me. They, they were living in the gap a hundred percent. And they, in fact, I remember when we went to the financial marketplace to talk to them, they came to us and, and they wanted to talk about how great America was. And I just kind of smile like, mm, we got our challenges too. <laughs> we're no perfect country. And when you play the comparison game, oh my gosh, yeah. that's not going to get you anywhere. Um, you'll always be in the gap if you play the comparison game. Yeah. It's funny, and, you see, funny because, you know, think about it. Who do you compare yourself to? You ever compare yourself to somebody who's doing worse than you? I don't think so. <laughs> no. <don't> think so. <laughs> you well, know, sorry. who do you choose? Who do you choose to compare yourself to? Somebody doing, you know, you're never going to win that game. You're yeah. never going to win it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's so easy to fall into that trap. Oh, yeah. And so you have not just individuals falling into that trap. You have complete cultures and societies falling into it. Well stated. And if we can show them like, okay, yes, there's gaps. By the way, I've got some gaps too. <laughs> like how encouraging is that? Maybe sometimes just to say, I know where you're coming from. I've been there. I've been through that, that gap myself. But how more powerful is it to say, well, look what you've done. Look what you've accomplished. Look at where you're at. You're not the same person you were today, it, where, you, where you were as to who you are today. You're not going to be the same person tomorrow as you continue down that path. And what's powerful about that experience in Guatemala is we brought two things to play. We talked them, you know, the laws of growth kind of stuff, and those were great. But we also talked about values. 
and we started you and I in the podcast and earlier this year when we were in Colorado, just the, the importance of values. And we're, we're picking a word each year, but really a value. So what do you value? Because yeah. you can't get, I and mean, I've said it before multiple times, you can't get division without values, man. You can't have a clear path in terms of what you can do and the impact that you're making without clarity of those values. What are your values? What I love about the way you laid it out in your book is it that you were very intentional about making the point that your your values are our verbs, they're action items. Yes. And man, it is just that I just I read that and I'm like, oh man, I got to rethink my stuff. I got to go back, pull out my list. <laughs> I, yeah. I got to drill down on it because I thought that's what they should be, right? This is our foundation. This is a found to me. This is our found foundation of everything about us is our value system, and yeah. so. You know, I've always kind of looked at it as the foundation, right? Which is not a lot of movement in the foundation. You don't want movement in the foundation. But beyond that, I think you're spot on. You know, we've we've, we've got to have that foundation that's not going to move. That's our anchor, right? Yeah. But then we got to take the action to go from there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some more time on values as we go into 23 here. We'll, we'll come up with some. We might we might need to come back and revisit that. Yeah, I, I think so. You know what's really cool is um, I did a lot of research on that book that you mentioned, and one of the things between the version that you're reading that you read and the final that came out there, I went back and I I just wanted to verify something. <laughs> like I, I'm putting stories out there, and there's no perfect person only one has ever walked this planet. Okay. So I'm sharing stories of people of imperfect people. They yeah. struggle in their own gaps, but they've, they found some gains and they've found hope. And yeah. that hope is pretty significant. That was the common denominator that I found in every one of them is yeah. they rediscovered hope. And, um, Napoleon Bonaparte, this is the one that I went back and I wanted to study it up because I, and some, if you Google, if you Google George Washington, my, my good, I mean, it doesn't matter. If you Google anybody, you're going to find some controversial thoughts and of opinions course. about somebody, right? It's out there. So I'm like, okay, is he good or bad? Napoleon Bonaparte. And, um, I went back and I, I studied up on him. I'm like, okay, what? He had a heart for other people, despite who he was and became an emperor. But before he even became emperor, he was a runt. He was bullied. He was not encouraged early on. And then he had some family members that encouraged him. And then he said to himself, I'm going to encourage other people. He's the one who has one of the greatest quotes of all time for a leader. Leaders are dealers of hope. Dealers, yeah. dealers of hope. And understand what, where France was at that time. They were not a healthy country. No, they no. were living in the gap. And for him to be able to lead as he did as an ar army general and be able to help really establish freedom for the people of France, you know, History books will show you that he did positively have a, he, he changed the needle a little bit. So while he may have not have been a perfect guy, he's certainly not a perfect emperor, boy, he did bring hope to the people. And I thought, okay, wait a minute, there's value in this. So I, I made sure that that story was told and I, I clarify a little bit, understanding why, you know, some of the concerns there, but understand well, none of us are perfect. And if we can be dealers of hope, if we can encourage other people, boy, then we're living in our purpose. So thoughts on that? No, I mean, you know, I, I can understand why you, you wanted to do a little double check on Napoleon. But the truth of it is, even those who, you know, maybe maybe aren't all good as we define it or or have done evil, you know, on, on our planet or towards some of our, our um, cultures, there's still lessons in there. They were still leaders. You know, this is the, this is the thing that intrigues me the most about leadership is you can be a great leader doing bad things. Yeah. You know, and then we don't go into need to go into some of the obvious names that, you know, history yeah. has shown us how that works. Um, but it's, it's intriguing because 
you know there was encouragement in there. You know there was inspiration in there. You know there was motivation. You know sometimes probably probably at 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 more than just a suggestion. But at the end of the day, for people to act at their highest, they've got to be at the right mindset. You know, so think about it again from a job perspective. You're a leader in your workplace. Yeah, your people. You know, you. I'm sure you've seen this, and I know you're. You're an encouraging type of guy. You've probably seen how that impacts, even when it's just a. You know, I mean, let's be honest. You know, just kind of a a generic, but not necessarily self serving. You know, how you doing? Great job. Well done. You know, have an awesome day. But then you then you see the the impact of that. So when we get a little more intentional about it when we put a little more um, meaning behind it, uh, that could be a pretty powerful tool. Yeah. And again, it's a win-win. And yeah. who who would not want to make someone else feel better? How can yeah, that be sure. a bad thing? Yeah. And it's, it's, it comes, you feel encouraged when you encourage other people just naturally. It's like, maybe I was meant to do this. Maybe you were. <laughs> That's right. And when somebody encourages us, that serotonin lifts and it, it's a really powerful part in terms of how to lead people, not just with their head, not just, you know, you said it earlier. You got to touch a hand before, touch a heart before you ask for a hand. Right. So you want to touch them by that heart is, 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 is really the intent. Well, there. it's, it's true. I mean, you know, there is a physiological response. Mm -hmm. to those things i mean there's just it they're just i mean there's been so much written about it in the last 10 years and and lots of simon Sinek wrote about it i mean yeah. everybody's pulling this in to what they're writing about because it, it's reality you know now that science and technology and all the testing they've been able to do you know they really show us how much impact you know here we are i have no idea we were going to go down this trail but but there's scientific proof that encouragement changes our physiological state. Yeah. And guess what? That doesn't require medication. It doesn't require a therapy session. It's just words of encouragement, man. It, it best, is. Be, best medicine out there. It is. It's great. So let's let's kind of land the plane on this one. Um, I love this topic. We can keep going. You and I had some great stories in our our experiences with Guatemala and others. And, and, um, you know, what's great is when we get in the position to encourage others, we're encouraged back. Yeah. And, um, I just, just be reminded of that as, as we step into each day, the opportunities that are there, um, there's an opportunity to encourage somebody else, knowing that that encouragement is going to, um, be felt in your own heart. And, um, that that's going to be pretty significant. So Barry, um, let's land yes, the plane. Paul. Let's land the plane on this one. Okay. Tips, tip and challenge. We've talked a lot about it, but what are, what's a tip that you would have for everybody as they move forward with this idea? I think the tip is just slow down and, and watch for it. Right. Um, could be a conversation with the have with your significant other, a kid, your parents, a, you know, a, a, a neighbor, um, look for those opportunities, set the intention. You know, one of the things I'm, I'm still kind of, I'm waiting for next week to really dial in my 2023 playbook, right. You know, we're yeah, yeah. both of using, but I know I've got, got a file folder full of notes. And in one of those is something that, I, you know, again, kind of thinking in a, okay, what's my two, two Oh two, three um, playbook here and is random acts of kindness, you know, to intentionally go out and look for those, you know, and I, so there's kind of the the total don't know anything, you know, mm -hmm. just ignore it, not no awareness at all. Then there's a, okay, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of be a little more aware to to maybe notice some of those things, and then take it to the next step is actually go out there and, and intentionally make those things happen. So I think I think I won't put all the pressure on our listeners here, but just encourage you. You know, the tip is just just be aware. You know, get it somewhere. Get it in words of affirmation, get it on a sticky note. Um, you know, who am I, who am I going to change? Who am I going to impact today? You know, whose whose life am I going to impact today? And just say that out loud. It's another thing I'm 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 working on for 2023 is actually audibly talking about my goals every morning to myself. Yeah. You know, but saying them out loud to just kind of, you know, just just anchor that, right? 
Um, so set the intention. My tip is find the opportunity, but just, you know, be aware to find that opportunity. And then my challenge is do it. You know, yeah. again, this is go back to the OODA loop, right? Uh, observe, orient, then what? Decide, decide, act, act, right? So yeah. one thing to be aware and see those opportunities. It's another thing to actually maybe walk up to a total stranger and say, hey, I just noticed you were doing a great job you know, cleaning up the cardboard boxes after stacking new cans of beans on the shelf, you know, yeah. while you're walking down an aisle in a grocery store. And I just wanted to thank you for that because I, I had room to get my cart by. Now, look, yeah. that takes no effort, right? But for that guy, you know, maybe he was late to work because his kids are sick or his yeah. car broke down yeah, and he just needed a little word of encouragement. So just just do it. Do it. I know I know our listeners, right? We know who you are. We know yeah. who you are. And you're all I know you've all got the heart to serve in this way. Um just gotta close that gap between what we know and what we do. So get out there and do it. That's a real challenge. I love it. You know, think about it this way. Let's build off that. Guys, people we live in a discouraged world. <laughs> right? People are discouraged. Even on the highway driving, um, I, yesterday I was in the, the store, a UPS store trying to mail something. And, you know, there are two customers discouraged. And then the person on the other end who was the cashier living in discouraged world. And I'm like, it's all around us. There's a lot of discouragement. Um, I was listening to an old classic Steve Winwood song, um, <laughs> higher love. And he talks about the challenges of our world and the, and the discouragement that's there. Well, guys, wait a minute. We can be agents of hope. We can step forward despite the discouragement that's happening around us and be a voice of encouragement for somebody else. Look for those opportunities. They are there every single day. If, it's, if it's the person at the, the grocery store who you see something doing something awesome, hey, if you catch somebody doing something good, let them know. Hey, dude, that was awesome. Love it. Keep it up. You know, find those things. If, if it's just letting somebody in front of you, if you're driving, like, you know what? Yeah, go ahead. You go, I'll get there. Help them. People need encouragement. Let's be dealers in hope. Let's be agents of hope. So that's my tip and challenge. Um, one reference that I'm going to share resource that I love. It's, um, a John Maxwell book. It's one of my favorites. It's one that's hardly ever talked about. It's a small little gift book that I love, but it's called Encouragement Changes Everything. There you go. And um, if you haven't, I think that yeah. was I think that was number fifty six. Fifty six. Yeah, I think that was number fifty six. Yeah, I think yeah, somewhere in the middle of all his hundred <laughs> books that he's got, it's right there. So. Encouragement does change everything. It does. And hey, feel free to bust out a happy new day. That's right. That yeah. sounds like something our friend Mike Leitner. I saw him this weekend. Sounds Mike, like Mike would have said. That's his name. It was Mike. The guy who said it, Mike. And so it wasn't Leitner? It wasn't Leitner, but it was it was Mike. Oh, okay, yeah. now we're we're getting closer. <laughs> I see. Yeah. We're on a was, stay come, join us on our next episode when we figured out who said happy new day. He was a little of red or something. Mike. Right. Okay, we'll work on it. Just so the people that after hours conversation here. Was he the oh, also the pilot for Maxwell? John Maxwell? No, that was Jerry. 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 That was Jerry. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, listening, watching. I hope you are encouraged. Um, we're gonna that's gonna be one of our missions this this coming year in 2023 as we share more podcasts. We want you to be encouraged each and every time. So more podcasts. More podcasts coming to you. Mike so. Poland. Mike Poland, that's it. That's it. That was Mike Poland. He's he was our he was our roundtable trainer. Yeah, that's it. I knew he's, we'd get it. Happy new guy. Still come back for next episode, but yeah, yeah. Happy new day. Oh yeah, and we've got a good one coming up. So, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in, and we're going to talk about the power of growth next week. So we always uh, have a good one coming up. Yeah, we do. So thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Breaking Average podcast. If you loved what you heard, please take a moment to subscribe. 
This show was produced by R Squared Multimedia. All opinions and comments expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and do not reflect the opinions or views of any of the advertisers, producers, or platforms. As you continue your day, what is one action that you can apply from this podcast to your life? Tune in for our next episode as we continue to challenge everyone to break average. It was because of that one statement, because one person who was not a good person said, oh, I admire Napoleon Dynamite, or what, or not Dynamite, <laughs> Napoleon, <laughs> but oh, there we go. It that was, was Dynamite, right? It was Dynamite, that's funny. <laughs> and I, by the way, and speaking of encouragement, if, if you haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite, you may want to watch that, that'll encourage you too. <laughs> that'll encourage anybody. <laughs> Especially the dance move. If you can do that dance move, and you know, help Pedro win too, right? That's encouraging. We digress. Yeah. <laughs>